Warning, the following episode contains graphic images. From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. While the famous Charles Fort mentioned unusual attacks on livestock as far back as the late 19th century, reports of modern animal mutilation in the U.S. first began to hit papers in the 1960s. In 1967, a newspaper called the Pueblo Chieftain reported that Colorado resident Agnes King found her horse Lady bizarrely mutilated and killed. Though the horse's neck had been skinned, there was no blood at the scene. Agnes's son Harry reported a strong medicinal odor in the air. Concerns over so-called mysterious mutilations of cattle, horses, and other livestock grew as the years went by. Today, many biologists, skeptics, and mainstream media figures believe the cases were a symptom of mass hysteria, wherein ordinary predation and scavenging were mistaken for the work of cults, cryptids, or even extraterrestrials. Were they correct? Were fringe beliefs about cattle mutilation simply the domain of kooks and eccentrics? Here's where it gets crazy. The answer isn't as simple as it might at first appear. As reports of cattle mutilation grew, concerns eventually reached the government. In 1975, Colorado Senator Floyd K. Haskell reached out to the FBI for help, claiming there had been reports of mutilations in nine states and 130 incidents in Colorado alone. By 1979, the FBI was on the case. They dubbed the project Operation Animal Mutilation and estimated that there had been as many as 8,000 cattle mutilations in Colorado. The final report, spearheaded by Kenneth Rommel, was just under 300 pages long. This thorough investigation concluded that while the majority of cases could be explained by natural predation, some defied conventional explanations. Rommel, for the record, notes the most credible sources have attributed this damage to normal predator and scavenger activity. However, this isn't the whole story. Before the FBI stepped in, the ATF conducted an investigation into possible cult involvement. And, before that, state-level agencies looked into the issue. The findings of the New Mexico State Police are particularly intriguing. They report evidence that the cows had been tranquilized and treated with an anticoagulant to prevent blood clots. Additionally, they claim the wounds of the cattle, which they characterized as surgical in nature, had become more sophisticated and professional over time. Law enforcement in Idaho, Iowa, and Montana all reported what they believed was some sort of evidence for cult involvement. However, while the FBI, ATF, and state agencies all investigated the cult angle, none were able to sufficiently prove organized human involvement. It seemed the vast majority of so-called mutilations were instead the result of humanity's original, most brutal enemy, nature. When an animal dies, scavengers go for things like the eyes and the tongue. They'll also opportunistically seek access to body organs via any available orifice. Coupled with scavengers and blood pooling in the lowest parts of the body or leaking to be consumed by insects, dehydration and bloating can cause the animal to look as though it has been cut and its organs extracted. But this is not the end of the story either. In September of 1975, a Blaine County Forestry Service employee reported seeing a group of figures in black hooded robes the day before several cattle were found mutilated. In October of the same year, a motorist in northern Idaho reported that 15 masked individuals formed a roadblock, forcing him to turn around as he was driving through an area known for mutilation incidents. There's another angle as well. Could the U.S. government be involved? According to researchers such as Colm Kelleher and Charles T. Oliphant, the U.S. government may be mutilating cattle to secretly track the spread of bovine spongiform encephalopathy better known as mad cow disease. Ranchers and police officers in New Mexico and Utah have also reported seeing unidentified craft 
or the famous unmarked black helicopters in areas known for cattle mutilation. To many, these alternate explanations are a result of paranoia, perhaps hysteria, skewing the perspective of ranchers and investigators. Instead, they say, these seemingly unnatural deaths have mundane, if disturbing, explanations. Other animals, mostly, and the occasional depraved human being. Perhaps that's the truth in most cases. Perhaps. But what about the other ones? Those anomalies left unexplained by law enforcement and natural causes. Were the bodies too decomposed to draw conclusions? Or, as Kelleher, Oliphant, and others argue, is there something they, maybe even the US government, don't want you to know? To join us in a trip down the rabbit hole of cattle mutilations, from the official narratives to the fringe theories, join us at our weekly audio podcast on StuffTheyDon'tWantYouToKnow.com.